All right, so what's your name? Benita Chavez. Benita, how old are you? I am 46. I'll be 46 the 24th of December. Happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. So you're a Christmas baby? Christmas Eve, yeah. What's your current situation? I'm homeless. Uh, living out here with my kid. Uh, you're living out here on the streets with your kid? Yeah. Where's your kid at right now? When my, no, my kid's 30. She's oh, an okay. adult. She's an adult. <laughs> oh, okay. No, she's not no. a little kid. So when you said a kid, I thought like... No, 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 not a little kid. A she's, little a, kid. You know, she's, she's an adult. She's an adult. So w where's your daughter at right now? Uh, she's on 40, 30 Indian school. Yeah. Probably with her boyfriend. Yeah. What are you guys doing out here to survive? Whatever we got to do. She boosts. You know. I do dates sometimes. It doesn't matter, you know. Whatever you got to do to survive, you got to do it, you know. Yeah. It's hard out here. Cold, cold as fuck. Is it? Yeah. What do you guys do to keep warm out here? Uh, we got we got blankets and shit. We got pillows that people have given us. It's, it's all right. Better than the situation I was in back home, you know. Yeah. Your situation out here on the streets is better than the one that you <laughs> were at home. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Um, I just too much. I couldn't handle it. I kept trying to hurt myself. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do it no more. So I left. Were you dealing with a bad relationship or something? Bad relationship, yeah. Dealt with it for 12 years, couldn't do it no more. Yeah, so I'm better out here than I'm back home. It is what it is, you yeah. know. So. so, you said your daughter's out here with you? Yeah. Do you guys stay at, in a tent or what do you guys do? Yeah, we stay in a tent, we got a tent, yeah. The, there's uh, people that go around, they give tents, they get blankets, they get pillows, they get food. They help a lot of us out, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of us out here that they, they don't boost, they don't have, they don't do dates, they don't do stuff like that, and that, those are the people that they help out a lot, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool, it's not, not as hard, it's, it's hard sometimes, you know? But they made it a lot easier for people to survive out here, that's why there's so many homeless people out here now. Yeah. Because there's so many people that help people with like the, the groups and stuff and the donation places that help people. Why do you gotta work? Why, you know, people don't wanna work no more. People wanna do that because they, they can live for free out here. It's sad as hell. Sad as hell. That's why so many homeless people. Do you think that they should go about it a different way? Yeah, a whole different way, you know, because what well, they're doing is making it easier for people to live on the streets. You think that they're just enabling people? Enabling people, yeah. When they come and give out like food and Yeah, and it, you like know, it's, it's okay to do that, but they overdo it. They overdo yeah. it. They fucking. We got, they've given us like maybe 20 blankets in the last week. You know what I'm saying? It makes it a lot easier for people to be like, fuck it, I don't need a job. Why, why work? Why pay bills when you can work and live out here? There's a lot of people that I know that have jobs and that are living on the streets. So they don't have to pay rent, so they don't have to buy food. They don't have, you know what I'm saying? They get donated everything that they need. Fucking, it's crazy. It's crazy. I, I don't know. I'm, and the situation I'm dealing with right now with my courts and shit, if I wasn't going to the court situation, I'd probably have a job. But I gotta get that shit taken care of first. I gotta wait to get caught up. <laughs> Cause I'm not gonna go turn myself in. <laughs> but when I do it, then things will be different. For now, they're there what they are. Let me ask you more about um, what we just talked about. I know, that's an interesting perspective because a lot of people out here, they, they're usually asking for like more resources. They yeah. say that there's not enough. Do you think there's enough resources out here on the streets? Yeah, if yeah. You really if you to look, get out if you, if, yeah, there is. Um, they're, they've they've come to me a few times and told me that you know if, if without my warrants and stuff I didn't have my warrants they would help me with housing they would help me with they they help people with everything so for people to say oh there's no help out here is bullshit because I've been out here for six months and I've been offered houses and apartments and you just got to go through programs and get it yeah. people don't want to get their shit together they don't want to do it you know what I'm saying is what it is they like getting high when you get high you don't want to do nothing why why go do a program when you can go on the street for free and people are gonna give you food and clothes and shit to survive out here it's sad as hell i think if they cut it down a little bit people would fucking get off their ass and start doing shit for themselves you know that would kind of incentivize them yeah to make them do shit because what they're doing work and all that right yeah because what they're doing now like i said they're just helping people want to be homeless you know what i'm saying it's okay. crazy why even try if you You're get just everything for, out free. Here for free yeah right? um so where do you guys set up your tent and all that stuff? Do you guys set it up here, like at, at that alley right there? No, well, I live, we stay on 35th um, in Indian School. There's there's a place out there, it's like a field, and there's a lot of homeless people out there. They stay out there, we all watch out for each other. 35th Avenue Indian School? Yeah, okay. yeah, we all watch out for each other. But 
So it's going like to come to an end. Tents set, set yeah, there? yeah. There, there's like maybe 15, 20 people living out there right now. Okay. But it's going to come to an end because they've already told everybody they had they had a week to get out of there. But in a way, it's a good thing. In a way, it's not because what they're doing is they're throwing them to the streets and they're just going to come back out here and sleep in the in front of the buildings and, and what they don't want. What, what I don't understand is if they're away from everything, they're not bothering anybody, why not leave them in that field? Instead of throwing them from the field to where they're just yeah. going to go out there and sleep in front of the buildings and do shit they're not supposed to be doing. I don't know. It's it's crazy the way. I know that they is. have this big encampment downtown. Oh, they they close they're closing okay. it. They're closing that. They're closing they? it. Yeah. Um, Cass Cass is closing that. They're what they're. That's what I'm telling you. Cass, I'm I'm in Cass too. They're gonna help people get off the streets. They're gonna help people with apartments. They they set you up in a hotel for like a week, and after that week, if you stay and do what you're supposed to do, they'll give you an apartment. And those are the people oh, that. So you have to stay there. And you have comply to stay. With their rules. We could comply with what they Because a lot of the people that I interview out here, they always tell me, like, no, you know what? They have a long waiting list. They don't even. No. They're not helping people right now. It's, it's, it's filled up. You got you to gotta, you gotta comply. You got to do what you're supposed to do, and that's what they don't want to do. That's what they don't want. They, like I said, they don't want to go by rules. Out here, you don't got to listen to nobody. You don't got to do shit. Get high all day. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. If they people do what they're supposed to do, it'd be easier for them. So were you staying at CAS? Um, I've never stayed there, but I'm, I'm part of the CAS. I, I went they, um, registered because, like I said, I got warrants and I can't do a lot of shit that people do. And uh, they helped me with my medical and with, like, certain resources that I needed, you know, counseling. Do you and, mind me asking what kind of warrants do you have? Um, I got a warrant for uh, uh, possession content to sell. Um, yeah, possession content to sell. Does that carry a lot of time with it? Um, because I've already been in prison twice. I'm looking at like five years. Okay. Yeah, What's that's the what. longest you've done in prison? Uh, two and a half. I've done five years completely. And with both times that I've been there, then I'm not ready to go back. But it is what it is, you know. It is what it is. When I get caught, it's that time to go, you know. But until then, I'm going to keep running. <laughs> How is it in there? Is it really bad? No. And it's, it's the older you get, the harder it is. Yeah. And every time I've gotten locked up, I've, I've lost someone like my dad, my brother. And it's like, it, it scares me to go back because I still got my mom out here. And she's pretty, she's old, you know. How's your mom? Uh, she's in her 70s. She's in her 70s. So you still, you still talk to her? Oh, yeah, I still talk to my mom. She wants me to go home, but like I said, the living situation that we were in, I can't, I can't be there. Um, in my mom's house, my little brother hung himself, and for me to be there, it, it just, it, it messes with my head, you know. I'm sorry. Yeah. So your mom asked you to come back home? Though? Yeah, yeah. But she got my ex of mine living there. <laughs> he helps her with my grandfather, so. I told her, just let him be there, you know, instead of me, because I can't, I can't be there, I can't. You know, as long as he's helping him, that's all that matters to me, you know. Yeah. And he's good to my grandparents. and. You know, to my mom, so that, that's good. So how did your daughter end up out here with you? Um, my daughter was out here. She invited me to come out here and get out of the situation I was in. Okay. So <laughs> she, she was, was out homeless here. before you were? Yeah, there. she was homeless before I was, yeah. And she asked me to come stay out here with her to get away from, like I said, from the situation that I was in. Yeah. So I came out here and she helped me out a lot, you know. She's a good kid. She'd give me an asshole, but she's a good kid. <laughs> she's a good kid. Before you were homeless, how was your life? Did you have a job or? Um, I helped my mom in her cleaning business. Um, I, my mom helped me out a lot. Um, my, I got a lot of mental issues and, and, and back problems, so it's it's she helps me and, and, and I was doing like like I said, helping her with the cleaning business and stuff. And you know, it was I was working with a friend of mine too, but he turned around and screwed me over, <laughs> so I quit working for him. Um, I like I said, cleaning, cleaning his house and shit. And I, he helped me out for like 23 years, and then turned around and fucking did me dirty. <laughs> yeah. and, but it is what it is. Life's hard, I guess. You know, got to deal with it as it comes. Who says? All right. Well, hey man, thank you for sharing your story. I really do appreciate it. Are you okay if I share this story on my YouTube channel? Yeah, you you good. Mm -hmm. And just in case anybody wants to reach out to you with any sort of help or donations, do you have any contact information that you want to share? Um, like an email? Yeah, um, my email is 127 um, at Benny, hold on, 127 at Benny gmail.com. How do you spell? It's B E N I. Okay. Yeah. So it's one, number one, T W O, 
number seven, and then uh, uh, it's it's Benny's it Benny's at gmail.com. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, thank you.